In baseball, the first name in bats is Louisville Slugger. Hillerick and Bradsby, the makers of the Louisville Slugger, began in 1857 as J.F. Hillerick and Son, manufacturing a different wood product that was more in demand at the time, butter churns. Their career in baseball began when John Hillerick's son, Bud, snuck out of school to catch a game one day and boldly promised star player Pete Browning that he could make him a new bat after the star broke his in the game. H and B ended up holding a majority of the bat market for years until the acceptance of aluminum bats in the 1970s. In 1978, they expanded their capacity to manufacture aluminum bats. The company manufactures other brands as well. Powerville Golf since 1916 and Louisville Hockey since 1968. In 1992, the executives of the privately held family company decided to address some nagging problems. Our executive management staff had a series of meetings looking at the issues they felt needed to be addressed by H&B. Uh, these involved everything from order entry problems to production problems to returns, um, getting inventory straightened out as far as too much of what we weren't selling, not enough of what we were. And that led us into looking at things that would help all of those issues at the same time. h and circumstances are actually very common among corporations and were particularly intense in the 1990s. Companies preparing for Y2K and evaluating potential problems had a crucial decision to make perform an expensive reconfiguration of connected but independent legacy computer systems, or start over with a completely new system designed to streamline information flow in support of sales operations and supply chain management as well as accounting, finance, and marketing. The choice is a difficult one. The new systems are called ERP, or Enterprise Resource Planning Systems. They are designed to simplify all of the processes of the firm, or enterprise, by storing all information in one common database, as well as automatically updating the information in every stage of the production process. Using real-time information, the production department manufactures only the inventory that the sales department has requested, and the shipping department is more efficient. ERP's benefits include increased customer service, higher profits, and a boost in morale as frustration at repetitive tasks and missing information fade away. Implementations are long, usually lasting years. The transition period between the legacy system and the ERP system is difficult as employees are forced to abandon their habitual ways of working for all new methods. But according to Hillerick and Bradsby, and many others, the cost of implementation will be worth the savings down the road. The process of making wooden bats seems simple enough, but under the legacy system, it had become inefficient, with only the top 15% of the customers being serviced. We found that we were shipping on time and complete 30-40% uh, to our major customers. Uh, they have to have 100% on time and complete. That is part of the contract that we have with them. Um, our accounts receivable, AR, was running real long, 365, 400 days. Our production people weren't communicating with their salespeople and management staff the way that they should. Uh, we were having problems of transferring information between all those groups. It would take anywhere from a couple of days to a week to get information answered. In fact, H&B's service quality was in trouble. Because the manufacturing department and sales department didn't always communicate, the production processes were out of tune with demand. Inventory was processed in batches at night, but it was not attached to any sales tickets until it got to shipping. The shipping department was burdened with tracking down inventory to fill orders. Sometimes it wasn't there. Suppliers were out of sync with H&B's production because H&B was not able to accurately predict their needs. H&B was in desperate need for a streamlined production process that was triggered exclusively by the sale of their product. 
The first step to streamlining production was to acknowledge the problems and devise the needs of the new ERP system. Once that was agreed upon, the committee chose the German company SAP to be their software provider in April of 1995. SAP is a server-based system where a common server holds all the company's information. Every PC is connected to the server, and once data is entered, it lives on the server where everyone can see it from any PC. Data entry is crucial to the success of SAP. Procedures are strict and rather inflexible, and discipline is important. SAP starts the production process at the very beginning with development. We have a spreadsheet um, in Excel that we use to create a list of materials. Each spreadsheet holds 100 materials and has all the fields necessary to create the product in SAP properly. Um, these fields are the sales information, the pricing information, production information, inventory information, purchasing information. And this way all information gets an SAP at one time. Lumber for the bats comes from small mills in Pennsylvania. The wood is shipped to the Akeley, Pennsylvania plant where all of the billets are made. Billets are thick dowels of wood from which the bat is cut. The Akeley plant is the clearinghouse of billets for the Ellicottville, New York, and Louisville, Kentucky plants, which manufacture wood bats. SAP ships the billets to Louisville if the bat is professional or personalized, or to Ellicottville if the bat is for consumers. The billets are pulled to the machine. They're unbundled at that point, and the operator runs that batch. Um, once he has a complete truck, we issue a job ticket to the floor for that and the job ticket and the bats go through the system. The bats are branded, they're sanded, um, dipped in lacquer, boxed, and at that point are put into inventory. Uh, the operator come through as he puts the bats away, make an entry into the system, stating this job ticket is complete, and here's how many I put into inventory at that point. Because the Louisville plant is responsible for the pro player's bats, as well as special occasion bats, such as World Series bats, they run small batches of inventory and the work is more personalized. They make 300 different products and their output is 350,000 plus bats a year. Ellicottville manufactures the rest of the wooden bats, some 400 different models, which total over 800,000 bats per year. And their inventory batches vary depending on the order that they are filling. In both plants, Inventory is sorted by requested ship date on the sales order schedule line. H&B also maintains several warehouses in the system to sort out inventory for their largest customers. SAP has also helped H&B centralize their operations by linking their various plants together onto one system. On the legacy system, each plant had a warehouse number and because they batched inventory at night, their information was only updated each morning. With SAP, each facility still has its own number, but shipping information is updated in five minute increments, and all other information is real time. Nobody's really limited by plant. They can all see what sales orders, deliveries, production tickets, um, things of that nature in any given plant that they work in. Although the production processes are running smoothly now, it was five years before H&B saw quantifiable results from their ERP system. The arduous implementation process began in May of 1995 with training classes for the implementation team. The MIS committee and the configuration committee, who would design the data entry screens and customize SAP to the company's needs, had to learn ABAP, the programming language, to keep the system running and to attach outside applications. The configuration committee later had to teach data entry procedures to employees. In July of 1995, a test system was created and the 18-month configuration process began. We knew going into it there would be some glitches. Um, during our development phase, which lasted 18 months, we had gone through and crashed our test system many times. 
had to be rebuilt, reinstalled. Um, we knew we would have resistance from the people who had been here for a very long time. Suppliers had a hard time with the new system, which is more sophisticated than their systems. Most of our suppliers are really mom and pop type stores. Uh, they are doing limited internet access stuff and they're doing very limited vaccine stuff. Morale sagged during the transition period as longtime veterans struggled to change the way they worked. It raised everybody's stress level for a, for a temporary period of time. It was very stressful. We, we implemented first in PowerBuilt and it was not fun coming to work for about a year because you, you didn't know if you could ship stuff out the door or you might not ship out the right quantities and different things. We, had, we didn't have it down right, so the, uh, the level of stress was just un almost unbearable. After struggling through implementation, H&B now sees the value of their ERP system. Currently, the company ships 85% of its orders on time and complete, versus 40% before SAP. Because of their new efficiency, labor costs were reduced and employees' time became free to work on other projects. California is our largest warehouse distribution plant anywhere. Um, they will ship roughly $60 million of the product for us each year, the bulk of which, probably $45 million of it, goes out in the month of February and March. Each year, it was not uncommon for them to work six days a week, roughly 75 hours that week. The first year on SAP, uh, meaning February and March of 98, we had, if I remember correctly, somewhere in the neighborhood of under 100 hours of overtime for those two months, which was unheard of. No temporary workers, which was unheard of. And for those two months, saved roughly $100,000 in overtime cost. All of it because SAP will only print out a delivery ticket for inventory that it has in the system that it knows is available to ship. With SAP regulating inventory and shipping, customer service is soaring. We've actually polled our top customers and we're in the 90 to 95% satisfaction category there. We're transferring information through the system faster and easier and we're able to ship the smaller customers when they actually wanted it instead of when we could get around to it. Uh, that's made a huge difference in the perception of H&B. Uh, we're now being noted more as a customer service oriented corporation than a performance corporation for product. Accounting now has easy access to information that helps them stay on top of accounts receivable and the sales cycle has been shortened eliminating the cash crunch. But the ultimate result came in 2001, when h and sales were the highest ever, over $110 million. SAP has probably most helped in the area of being able to look at where we were, where we are, and where we're going. By that, we can see how the orders came into the system, how we dealt with the, with the orders that came in, how production kicked in to meet that demand or purchasing kicked in to meet that demand, where the inventory levels stood at, where they went to, and how the inventory left the buildings. And then be able to look at the customers and say, were they serviced in the way we think they should have been? And, but better yet, did we really do our job? Um, the, the system can spit out the numbers fairly fast for us and we're able to use it to react to the situations going on much faster than before. Although it's never a smooth ride, changing a company over to an ERP system can really free it from inefficiency and disorganization that eventually erodes the quality, service, and profitability. However, it's not just the software that solves the problems, the people have to be committed to making changes. It really focuses you to become disciplined in what you do. You cannot not make entries or, or 
or not be timely with your entries. It, it really focuses you to, to, to do the right things to run your business. I would have to say I'm a believer in SVP. Have to be. I'm the one who has to sell it every single day. We know it works and uh, uh, allows me to go home and sleep at night knowing that uh, we don't have to deal with this situation for a long, long time.